Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be doing a video on SQL and one-to-many relationships and how you can connect tables together using joins. Everyone, this video is part of a series on MySQL and it's a, basically a crash course on how to get up and running with SQL so you can build out the database app portion of your applications. So if you're learning to code, this will be a good crash course to help you get started with the database. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the rest of the series by clicking on the links. And uh, I'm going to use this blog post that I wrote to uh, reference quite a bit. So if you feel free to check that out as well. And we'll get right into it. So one-to-many relationships are useful when you have uh, so some information that can be associated with many of the same different things. So for example, one person can own many pets. And so in this example, we have Stephen who owns two different pets. And, he, you know, if he could add another pet, you know, he could have 20 pets. And if he was to have 20 pets in a table where all the information is just in one table, then we would have a lot of duplicate information. So if we want a lot of information about Stephen, like his salary, his age, etc., then every single row where he has a pet we would have to put that information again. So we have Stephen and his salary, and Stephen and his salary, and his pet names. And so this is, leads to a lot of duplicate information and a lot of problems because we don't want to have to fit, like let's say it's his salary changes or um, you know his age changes. We have to go through the database and find every single piece, every single row where Stephen is and change that information. And that's really expensive and error prone. So there's a better way and that's to separate the information into multiple tables. And so in this example here, we've split the information into a separate owner's table and a pet's table. And the pet's table should probably be named animals, but whatever. Uh, so now we have owners where the owner is Steven and then a separate table for pets. And what we have here is the pets because you can have each owner can have multiple pets that's a one-to-many relationship between owners and pets so we've got one owner and many pets or you have one uh, you know one user and many purchases or something like that and so the way that you associate these tables together is through their IDs so we have a primary key for the owner and then over here, the owner ID is a foreign key. So you can see that the information is related by their IDs. So any pet here with an owner ID, you just go find the owner ID and then match it to the owner. So for example, Snowflake has the owner ID of 25. So Snowflake belongs to Steven. And then Rex has an owner ID of 26. So Rex belongs to Joe. And that's basically how one-to-many relationships work. And the better part about this is that you don't have to edit Steven's salary or age or any information uh, you know, hundreds of times if he's in the database hundreds of times. You only have to edit it one time in the place where his information is stored. So I'm going to go ahead and create some data to play with. That way we can do some experimenting. And again, so on the one side of the relationship, you've got the primary key, you know, the, pers the person's ID. And then in the many side of the relationship, you're using that same field uh, in that column as well. And you're going to use those to match, uh, join them together. And we're going to just do this the slightly incorrect way or the not proper way just to demonstrate the, how it actually works. Okay, so create table owners. And then inserting the data into the owners. And then creating the, t the pets table. and inserting data into the pets table. So 
so we'll let go. And then we need some pets without owners to play around with. Go. Okay, and now we've got the data. And so now that we have two separate tables for owners and pets, something a command like this isn't going to work all by itself. Select pet name from pets where owner equals John. We can't do that because the information is spread apart, spread across two tables. So what we need to do is one of two things. We would either need to run as two separate queries to get the owner ID of John and then get the pets with John's owner ID, or we could use a join. So let's go ahead and do it the uh, the non-join way first. So we'll get the uh, owner ID and the name from owners where owner equals John. And then we'll hit go. Oops, uh, what did I do wrong? Unknown column owner. Oh, where name equals John. Okay, and then we get John with the owner ID of 13. Okay, so now we have John's owner ID, and now we can get all the pets with the owner ID of 13. So let's go ahead and do that. So where owner ID equals 13. Just so I don't forget. And so select pet name and owner ID from pets where owner ID equals 13. And now we've got PJ, Buffy, Skeeter, and Moonlight. So these four pets are owned by John. And that's one way to get the information, but it's super painful because, you know, two separate queries and it's just very confusing. So let's go ahead and learn how to join the tables together. And so what we're trying to do here is join the tables together by their owner ID or their common column. And the common column in this case is owner ID because it's a one to many relationship between owners and pets. So the matching column is what is used to join them together. And I highly recommend checking out the manual, but I'm just going to go ahead and show you the um, the query and how to use it. So if we copy and paste that, we've got select and then all of the columns from both tables that we want to get uh, returned to us. So we've got name and then owners.age and then owners, owner ID, the pet name, and the family. And you'll notice that we have owners, owner ID here. Uh, the like the table, dot, and then column. And I'll show you that in a second. But so we get all the columns that we need, and then from the owners table, and then we're going to do an inner join. So it's basically just inner join, and then the table that you're joining uh, together. So you're joining pets onto owners, and then you're joining them based on the matching column. So when owners.ownerid equals pets.ownerid, where owners.ownerid equals 13. So we'll go ahead and I'm just gonna, well, I already have it copied. So we'll hit go. And then now we've got all of um, the information where the owner ID equals 13. So we've got John and his age four times, once for each pet that he has. So now, now that we've joined the tables together, now we can do a very simple query like we were able to do before. So I'm going to paste it in again, but instead of doing where owners.owner ID equals 13, we'll just do where name, oops, where name equals John. And then we'll hit go. And now we get the same thing, where the name equals John. But it's a lot easier. So we can just say, hey, get all the pets uh, who are owned by John. And now we've got the pet names. So 
that's basically how you could use joins to get specific information that you want. And the I just want to show you the join without any sort of where clause because it's going to show you all of the pet records, but it's going to show the pet, the owners as well, joined together. So we can hit go. And now we've got all of the pet names of the pets and their associated owners. So we can see that John has two pets here, Judy has two pets, Mary has two pets, uh, you know, and all the people that just have one pet, etc. So we've got all this pet information and uh, joined together. And then you can also, you know, you I mean you can do whatever you want. You can um, you can order by order by name. And then now you've got all the pets ordered by their owner's name. So we've got, you know, it organized. And then you could or order by age or get by a certain age or whatever you need to do. So that's basically, you know, one of many relationships. And the way that we had this set up is fine, it works, but it's not ideal because there is one big problem. So the way that we have it set up is the many t or the one to many relationship is just using an owner ID column in the pets table. So that's basically all we have and it's just set up as an integer. And this leaves us a problem. If we were to delete one of our owners, then we would end up with a pet that has an incorrect owner ID. So let's go ahead and give that a try. So in here, we have PJ and Buffy. They have the owner ID of 13. So if we were to go over here and delete the owner with the owner ID of 13, then we all of a sudden have pets that have an owner that doesn't exist. And that's a big problem because, well, the owner doesn't exist. So what we actually have to do is set up the relationship so the table and the database are actually aware that there is a foreign key relationship to, with, these, with these tables. And so that the way that you would do that is by actually, you know, basically just telling the database. And we'll go ahead and drop the pets table and recreate it. And we're going to do it correctly this time, or at least half correct. So if you do something like this, we're basically creating the pet ID and the pet name, class, age, etc., and the owner ID. But this time, instead of just setting it as an integer, we're saying that this owner ID column is a foreign key. And the foreign key references the owner ID of the owner's table. And so by doing that, we're basically making the relationship official. And without, by just leaving, um, by just having references, owners, owner ID, uh, we're setting up the relationship, but by default, it's uh, strict or no action or restrict. Yeah, restrict or no action. So that means that we won't be able to have pets without IDs or pets without owners. Um, but we will be able to have owners without pets. But we won't be able to have pets without owners. And if you want pets without owners, you have to set it up a little differently. So let's go ahead and hit go. We'll run this query, and then we have to fill up the, um, repopulate the data. So I'm going to do that. So insert into pets, and I'm going to insert it. And hit go. And we're not even going to be able to do this query because we have a owner that doesn't exist. So because that official, because the relationship is official, it's going to prevent you from doing things that don't make sense, like adding a pet with an owner that doesn't exist. So we have to get rid of all of the pets that have an owner ID of 13. So if we do that then the query should work. Okay, so now it worked. And now if you wanted to delete an owner that owns a pet with the relationship official, it's not going to let you do it. 
So if you uh, give that a try, I think it was Curtis that we did. If we go back, we can see that Curtis is still there. Let's just try it again. So deleting Curtis will not work because the database prevents you from doing that because there's a pet that is owned by Curtis. So Curtis has the owner ID of six. So if we delete the pets with the owner ID of six, then that will let us delete Curtis. So let's check page two. Okay, so we delete this one with the owner ID of six, then we should be able to delete Curtis. And go ahead and do that. And now it worked. And so that's because the, the database is preventing you from doing that. Uh, to, it doesn't want you to let you just break the uh, data. So we're good to go. But what if you do want to be able to have owners without pets and pets without owners? Well, then you would need to set it up slightly differently. And then this is where I would recommend checking out the manual because there's a lot of different options that you can have. So you could do on delete cascade where when you delete an owner, then all of the pets that are owned by that owner will be deleted as well. So that would be on delete cascade. And then you can also have, you know, on delete, uh, you know, you have restrict or you can have set null as well. And so set null will allow you to have null values. So if we want pets without owners and owners without pets, then a set null is what we would want to have. Okay, so it's kind of a pain in the butt, but let's go ahead and just delete the owners and the pets just to start over from scratch. Oh, okay, and we can't do that because it prevents you. Uh, so we'll delete the pets first, now the owners. Now we can create everything again. So, but we're gonna be careful this time. So we'll create the owners table first. SQL and create the owners table, okay? And then we'll populate the owner's data. So we're creating the data now for the owner's table. Okay, and now we're going to create the pets table, but this time we're going to do it a little bit different. We're going to use this query Create table pets, pet ID, pet name, class, age, family, owner ID. Everything's the same, but at the at the bottom here, we're going to uh, say on delete set null, and then we'll hit go. And then now we should be able to. Well, let's go ahead and populate the data for the pets. Add the SQL. And now we should be able to delete uh, owners. So let's say, okay, so if we delete John, let's go ahead and take a look first. So we've got these pets and these two have an owner ID of 13. So if we delete now the person with the owner ID of 13, it should let us, but it's going to set the owner ID to null. So now these dogs no longer have any pet, have any owner. And so that's, oh, and then it happened here too. So basically if you read the manual here, it'll help you figure out what settings to put with the relation with the table relationships. So on delete cascade, we would have deleted those pets as well. But because we have it set to null, it just set those, the owner ID columns to null. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, if it doesn't, feel free to just play around with it and, um, and yeah, experiment. So, and that's it. The last thing I wanted to cover was joins. And there's multiple kinds. There's inner, left, right, and outer joins. And the inner join only gets the rows when both tables have a match. So 
what we're doing here is we're joining the pets table and the owners table together. And so uh, when we join together, one table has to be on the left and one has to be on the right. And so the first table that you mention in the query is on the left side. And then after that, anything else gets added on to the right. So in this case, we've got pets on the left, owners table on the right. So in the inner join, we only get rows where both tables have a match. And on a left join, all you get all of the rows in the left table. So the left table in this case is pets. So we get all of the pets. And then anything in the right table that has a matching ID for foreign key will get connected on. So we've got everything just like we did with the inner join, but at the bottom you can see that we have some pets without any owners. And that's because we're that's because the pets table is the, is the left table. So with the left join you get all the rows uh, on the left table. And then so with a right join, you can imagine that we would get the opposite. We would get all of the rows in the right table. So just like when you run a right join, again, you get all of the information in the right table. So that's basically how uh, joins work. And then with an outer join, a full outer join, which actually isn't supported by MySQL, but with a full outer join, you get both. So we get, if we run a full outer join, um, which you have to kind of improvise to create it, but you get all the columns and then you get the rows from the left table that don't have a match and the rows from the right table that don't have a match. And that's a full ladder join. Um, and again, that query for the full ladder join is basically just connecting a left join and a right join with this thing called a union statement, which we're not going to get into. And this particular method of doing a full ladder join will remove all of the duplicates if there are any duplicate rows. So um, I'll put a link to you know some pages where you can read for more information on on different methods but we're basically just making a left join here and then running a union or adding a union and then doing a right join and then we get both. So that's basically um, full adder joins as well. And then so be sure to check out the assignments and the solutions to try to verify your understanding of joining tables together and one-to-many relationships. And that's it. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out the website truthseekers.io for more tutorials and recommended books and other stuff. So have a good day. See you later.